Is that my little skylark twittering out there? It is. Scattering around like a little squirrel. Yes. And where did the squirrel get home? Just this minute. Come in here, Tumbles, and see what I thought. I'm busy. What did you say, Bort? Well, now what's all that? Have you been out wasting money again? Oh, surely this year we can't, Tumbles. It's the first Christmas that we haven't had to economize. Yes, but still, we mustn't waste money, you know. Oh, after New Year's you'll have a big salary. Not until after New Year's Day. There'll be the entire quarter until I get paid. Oh, Tom, we can't borrow until then. Nora! The same little scatterbrain. Perhaps I was to borrow a thousand corner today, and then you went and spent it all by Christmas. And on New Year's Eve, a tile were to fall on my head, and there I lay. You mustn't say such things. But suppose something like that was to happen. Well, if something like that were to happen, I don't care if we borrowed money or not. Nora, Nora, just like a woman. But seriously, Nora, you know how I feel about that sort of thing. No debt, no borrowing. There's something constrained, something ugly even about a house that's founded by borrowing money. You and I, we've kept our heads clear until now, and we still shall for the little time we have left. Very well, Torvald, if you say so. And now, my little songbird, we mustn't be too crestful. No. The little squirrel sulking. Nora, come see what I've got here. <gasps> Money! <laughs> now, good heavens. I know a lot goes into housekeeping at Christmas time. Oh, no, good heavens, no. But it's an understood thing that he died with us at Christmas. 
But I remind you when he pops in this evening. Oh, Nora, I bought some excellent wine. Nora, you can't imagine how excited I am for this evening. Oh, Andy, and how the children will have it too. Oh, yes. Do you remember last Christmas? For a whole three weeks beforehand, you locked yourself up until long after midnight, every evening, making flowers for the Christmas tree and wrapping the presents. Oh, those were the most boring three weeks I've ever had to live through. Well, it wasn't the least bit boring for me. <laughs> but there was so little to show for it, wasn't it, Nora? Now, you mustn't tease me about that life again. How could I help it if your cat gone and tore everything to bits? Oh, my dear. I know you could. <coughs> and besides, you did try your very best to please us, and that's the main thing. And now I needn't sit here and be bored while you tie those pretty little eyes and these sweet little fingers. Well, I'm very busy. I must go read my letters. Excuse me, Mrs. Helm. Excuse me, the outer door was ajar. I suppose somebody forgot to shut it. My husband is out, Mr. Crossland. Yes, I know that. Then what do you want here? A word with you. With me? But it isn't the first of the month yet. No, it is Christmas Eve, and it will depend on yourself as to what sort of Christmas you will spend. Well, what do you want? I can't spare anything today. Oh, we won't talk about that until later on. I presume you can give me a moment. <coughs> oh, yes, but I... Good. I saw your husband going down the street earlier. Yes. With a lady. Well, what of it? May I be so bold as to ask if it were a Mrs. Lind? You are correct. Just arrived in town? Well, today, yes. Yes. She's a good friend of yours, isn't she? Yes, she's a very dear, very dear friend. 
Yes, I knew her once too. Yes, I know. Oh, you do? Good. Then I can carry on without beating around the bush. Is Mrs. Lynde to have an appointment at the bank? How dare you question me, Mr. Corsair? Since you ask, I'll tell you. Yes, Mrs. Lynde is to have a post. And it was I who recommended her. It was as I thought, then. So, it seems like one does have little influence just because one is a woman. Anyone would want to be careful not to insult anyone who does have... Has influence? Exactly. Mrs. Helmer, would you be so good as to use your influence on my behalf? Well, what do you mean? Would you be so good as to see that I'm allowed to keep my subordinate position at the bank? Well, who's trying to take it away? Oh, there is no necessity to keep up the pretense of ignorance. I can quite understand that your friend is not very anxious to be rubbing shoulders with me, and I quite understand too, after all, she is the one who took me out. Mr. Colson, there's nothing that I can do to help you. That is because you don't have the will, but I have the means to compel you. You won't tell my husband I owe you money. I suppose I would tell him. Well, then that would be a vile thing to do. I've been so proud of my secret, and for him to hear it so clumsily, and by you. Well, I'm probably in an unpleasant position. Only unpleasant? Fine. Tell him. <coughs> but it'll be the worst for you, because then my husband will see what a brute you are, and then you'll certainly lose your post. Listen to me, Mrs. Helmer. If necessary, I'm prepared to fight for my position in the bank as if I were fighting for my life. So it seems. Indeed, money weighs least on my mind in the matter. There are other things, but I may as well tell you. Once many years ago, I was guilty of an indiscretion. Yes, I know. Oh, the matter never came to court, but every way seemed closed off to me after that. So I took to the profession that you know of now. Honestly, I don't say I've been one of the worst. But now my sons are growing up, and I must win back as much respect as I can in the town. This position in the bank was the first step up for me, and now your husband plans on kicking me back down the stairs and getting into the mud. Well, how do you think I could endure as my husband in that sort of thing? I have known your husband since our student days. I don't suppose he is any more unassailable than any other husband. If you speak disrespectfully of my husband, Mr. Corkside, I'll show you the door. You are bold, Mrs. Allen. Well, I'm not afraid of you anymore. After New Year's Day, we'll be free of you and the whole situation. Listen to me, Mrs. Helmer. Either you have a very bad memory, or you're not very aware of business, such business that you and I have had. I should be obliged to remind you of a few details. How? When you came to ask for me to, uh, to lend you 250 kroner, it was for your husband's <coughs> trip abroad. Well, I didn't know where else to go. I promised to get you that amount. <coughs> and you did? And I promised to get you that amount on certain conditions. You were so taken up with your husband's illness that and your trip abroad that you paid no attention to the small details about our business arrangement. Arrangements that I should be obliged to remind you of. How? When it came to getting the money, I provided security of a bond, which I drew up. Yes, and which I signed. Yes, but below your signature, there were a few lines constituting your father's surety for the money. Those lines your father should have signed. Should have? He did sign. Yes. That was a very trying time for you, though, wasn't it, Mrs. Harmon? Yes. Your husband was very ill, and your father was very ill, too. My father was dying. And died soon afterwards? Yes. Can you remember what date your father died? What date of the month? Papa died on the 29th of September. That's right. I've ascertained that for myself. And in so doing, I've, there's a discrepancy that I cannot account for. Well, what do you mean? I don't know of any. It consists in the fact that your father died and then signed his letter three days after his death. I don't understand. How? Look here. Your father died on the 29th of September, but managed to date the signature the 2nd of October. It's a discrepancy, isn't it? Can you explain? Well, there may be any number of reasons. Your father may have simply forgotten to date his signature, and someone haphazardly not knowing of his death may have simply signed it and dated it in his place. What's important is the signature, and that is genuine. The signature is your father's, isn't it, Mrs. Hammond? No. 
I don't love this thing. Are you aware that's a very dangerous confession? But why? You'll soon have your money. Very likely. But matters of business, business that you and I have had, it seems to be the case that my one false step, which lost me all of my reputation, was nothing more or nothing worse than what you have done. Very well, do as you please, but I can assure you that if I lose my position for a second time, you shall lose yours with me. I will write to you out and make you calls. Out of the gate. Did you? Oh, yes, that's why Crogstad was here for a moment. Nora, I can tell by your face he's been here, begging you to put a good word in for him, and you were to make it look like it was your own idea. If he hadn't have been here. Yes. Nora, do you know what that means? Speaking to a man like that, and worst of all, telling me a lie. A lie? Yes. Didn't you say that no one had been here? My little songbird mustn't ever do that again. A songbird must have a clear voice. No false notes. Now that's enough of that. Ah. This is comfortable. Oh, Bob, are you busy? Well. Bank businesses. Already? Yes. I've asked the retiring manager to give me the full authority of the staff so that I can make some of my own arrangements. I'll work on it all the way through Christmas, and then by New Year's I should be ready and finished. Oh, so that's why Crog's Ah, uh, yes. Well, if you weren't so busy, I'd have asked for a terribly great favour. Well, what is it? No, oh, it's so silly, but I can't think of anything that'll do for the fancy dress. Ah, uh, so my little, my little obsonique was out of her depth. No one had such great taste as you, Tobal. Could you take me by hand and help me decide? Yes, I shall take you by hand and we will find something suitable. Oh, thank you, Tobal. So tell me about this cold stuff. Is it really so bad what he did? He forged a signature. Have you any idea what that means? Well, might he have done it out of dire necessity? Or sheer foolishness? Or oh, I'm not so hard-hearted I'd condemn a man of a wet slip? <laughs> no, you wouldn't, would you, Torvald? No. Many a man can redeem himself if he confesses his guilt and takes his punishment. Punishment? Yes. But this fellow Krogstad for weeks has been trying to play out of it with tricks. That's what's corrupted him. But how? Well, for weeks this fellow Krogstad has been going home, poisoning his family, telling lies, wearing a mask. Lying to his children. That's the worst thing. Are you sure of that? As a lawyer, I very well know that all men that go bad have lying mothers. Well, why only mothers? Well, the father has the same effect. But as every lawyer well knows, Nora, you must promise never to plead his cause. Now, let's shake hands on it. Nora! Shake hands! That's better. I don't think I can work with a guy like that. It makes me physically ill. How hot it is in here. Well then, I've got so much to get on with. Yes, and I shall look through some of these papers. And maybe I'll have a think about your fancy dress too. And maybe I'll find something in gold to wrap around our Christmas tree. My little songbird. I'll go back to my study. I have work.
Good afternoon, Laura. Oh, good afternoon, Dr. Wright. You must be going to talk about this, isn't What about you? Well, I always have time for you, you know that. I should take advantage of that as long as I am able. What do you mean, as long as you're able? Yes, does that alarm you? Well, it does seem such an odd way to put it. Is there anything going to happen? Something's going to happen, though I never really thought it come quite so soon. Oh, so it's you? Yes, who else? There's no point in deceiving myself. I'm the most wretched of all my patients. <coughs> For the last year, I've been under an audit in my internal economy. Bankrupt. Less than a month, perhaps. <coughs> and I brought it in the churchyard. Well, that's a horrible thing to say. Itself is damnably horrible. First of all, it's the horror that I must be gone through first. There was one more final test to make. And after that, I should know pretty well when the final disintegration will begin. Helmer's too sensitive to fix in anything, is he? I won't have him in my sick room. Oh, but Doctor, I won't have him there on any account. As soon as I'm certain that the worst is to come, I send him my card with a black cross on it. And you truly know well that the disgusting end has begun. Oh, you really are being absurd today. And just when I wanted to be in a pretty good mood. What? The death just around the corner? To pay for someone else's sins? Where's the justice in that? There isn't a single family with such inexorable retribution being exacted. That's the saddest part of all. Mm. Why do you smile then? No, it is you who are laughing. No. You smile, Dr. Wright. You're more than a rascal than I thought. Well, I'm in an absurd mood today. <coughs> so it seems.
But surely you believe in deeds? What do you mean? You said you were shipwrecked man clinging to a bit of wreckage. And I had good reason to say so. Well, I'm a shipwrecked woman clinging to a bit of wreckage. No one to cry over and no one to care for. It was your own doing. It was the only choice at the time. And well, what now? Nels, suppose we two shipwrecked people could join forces. Who's saying so? Two on one spot, we thank you all for leaving us alone. Christine, I... Why do you think I came back to town? Are you saying you gave me a thought? I have to wake or life is unbearable. All my life, for as long as I can remember, I've waked that's been my one great joy. But now I'm alone in the world, I feel completely lost and empty. There's no joy in waiting for oneself, no. Give me something, someone to wait for. I don't believe that. It is nothing but a, a woman's overstrained sense of generosity that prompts you to make such a Have you noticed anything exaggerated in me? Tell me, Christine, would you do it? Really, do you, do you know all about my past life? Yes. And do you know what they think of me here? You suggest just now that me you might be a different man. I'm certain of it. But it could still happen. Christina, you say this deliberately. Yes, I can see it in your face. Have you really the courage then? I need someone to be a mother to, and your children need a mother. You and I need each other, Nils. I have faith in you, the real you. With you, I could dare anything. Thanks, thanks, Christine. Now, I must find a way to clear myself in the eyes of the world. Oh, but I forgot. Um, the town teller. The town teller. We can't stay here much longer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, you're right. It's upset us both. 
Something ugly has come between us, the thought of death and decay. But we must try and shake it off. And until we do so, we must keep apart. Good night, Maura. Good night, Maura. Sleep well, my little son. Now I'll go and read my letter. Wretched women, you've ruined my whole life. For these last eight years, you've been my pride and joy. And now I find out that you're nothing but a liar, a hypocrite, even worse, a criminal. Oh, I should have foreseen it. Or your father's shiftless character. Be quiet. <coughs> or your father's shiftless character come out in you. No religion, no morality, no sense of duty. And this is what I get for condoning his fault. This is how you repay me. Yes, like this. You wrecked my happiness. You ruined my whole future. I'm in the power of a man without scruples. What do you can get me to do? Anything. Ask me about. Order me about as he pleases. And I dare not refuse. Oh. Now do you realise what you've done to me? Yes, but when I'm out of the way, you'll be free. No rhetoric, please. Your father was already ready with fine phrases, too. How would it help me if you were out of the way, as you so call it? Not in the least. To think that I should have to say this to someone I've loved for so long. Some life, you will remain here, in my house. That goes without saying. As for the children, I dare not trust you with them. Yes. It's from him. I should not read it. Read it. I dare me knew it. He made me move for both of us. No. I have to read it. Nora! Nora! Wait. I must read it again. Nora, I'm saved! I'm saved, Nora! And I? You too! We're both saved, both you and I. He says he regrets and apologises, a misfortunate change in his life. Oh, Nora, how these past three days must have been terrible for you. It has been a struggle. Seeing a way out of them too. Oh, Nora, let's put all those bad things out of our heads. Let's treat the whole thing as nothing but a bad dream. You love me as a wife should love a husband. It's just you hadn't had the experience to realise what you were doing. That is true. Nora, please will you forgive me? Just please accept that I apologise for those dreadful things I said when it seems that the whole world was crashing above my ears. Nora, I forgive you. I forgive you everything. Calm down, my frightened little songbird. You can rest safely here, and I shall protect you. Oh, Nora, how warm and cosy our home is. It's your refuge, where I shall protect you like a hunted dove I've saved from the talons of a hawk. Oh, little by little, I shall calm your poor fluttering heart. In the morning, you'll look on this quite differently. There'll be no more need for me to tell you that I've forgiven you. You shall know in your heart that I have. Oh, Nora, you don't know what a real man's heart is like. There's something indescribably sweet and satisfying for a man to know he's forgiven his wife, completely forgiven her with all his heart. In a way, he's made her doubly his, brought her into, the, into a new life. In a sense, she's become both his wife and his child. And that's what you shall be to me. But you must be absolutely frank. And I'll be both your will and your conscience. 
Why, what's this? Not in bed? Sit down, Tom, Lord. We have a lot to talk about. Nora, why does she look so stirred? Just sit down. Nora, you frighten me. I don't understand you. And that's just it. You don't understand me, and I've never understood you. Until tonight. Uh, Nora, what are you saying? Doesn't it strike you that there's something strange about the way that we sat here? No, what? For eight years we've been married now, and we've never sat down together to get to the bottom of a single thing. To have a serious conversation. Serious? What do you mean by that? For eight years. No, longer than that. We have never sat down in earnest to get together to get to the bottom of a single thing. But Nora, was I forever to keep involving you in worries that you couldn't help me with? I'm not talking about worries. We've just never sat down as man and wife. Oh, but Nora, how would that help you? That's just it. You don't understand me. I've been terribly wrong, Torvald. First by Papa and now by you. By, by, by the two men who've loved you more than anything else in this world? You've never loved me, Torvald. You just found it pleasant to be in love. What are you saying? And it's true, Torvald. When I lived at home with Papa, he used to tell me his opinions about everything. And so I too have the same opinions. If I didn't, then I'd have to hide it, otherwise he wouldn't have liked it. And then I came to live in your house. That's no way to talk about our marriage! You suited everything to your own taste, and so I came to have the same taste as you. So I thought. I don't know, really. Sometimes one and sometimes the other. What I'm saying is that I've lived here like a pauper, performing tricks for you. That's unreasonable and ungrateful. Have you not been happy here? No! That's something I've never been. Never happy? No. And it pains me to say to all, but it's true. I have never been happy in this house. There's some truth in what you say. Though you've exaggerated and overstated it. Nora, playtime is over now. Now comes lesson time. Whose lesson? My or yours? Both yours and the children's. Oh, Torvald, you're not the man to teach me to be a wife to you. But Nora! And how am I fitted to bring up the children? Nora! Didn't you say it a while ago that that was true? But that was in a moment of anger! You mustn't pay attention to that! You were perfectly right, I'm not fit for it. There's another task that I must finish first. I must try and educate myself if I'm to get to know the world around me. Nora! I don't, and I don't understand. How a daughter can't save her father on his deathbed, or a wife doesn't have the right to save her husband if I... I don't understand that. I need to find out which is right, the world or I. What are you trying to say? Haven't you any infallible guide to make matters? Pure religion? Well, Lord, I don't really know what religion is. What are you saying? All I know is what Pastor Hansen told me when I was confirmed. He told me that religion was this, that and the other. And that's something that I want to go into too. To see if religion is for me. Well, if religion can't guide you, then let me rouse your conscience. You must have some moral sense. Or am I wrong? Perhaps you haven't. I don't really know I'm quite well to buy it all. That's why I let my must go. That's why I'm leaving you. What's that you say? I can't stay in this house with a stranger. I'm sure Christine will take me in Oh, you're out of your mind. I won't let you. I forbid it. There's no good in you forbidding me anything any longer. This is madness. I'm going to take the things that are mine and nothing of you, or yours, yours, now or later. This is madness. I've never seen things more clearly and certainly as I do now. Clearly and certainly enough for you to forsake your own husband? Your children? Yes. Will you tell me about forsaking your love? It was this afternoon. We caught our left, it was laying out there. I never imagined for one second that you would submit to his conditions. I imagined that you would go up to him and say, go and publish to the whole world, and when that was done... But what then? Was I supposed my wife to shame and disgrace? When that was done, I expected you to come forward and say that I did it. I'm the guilty one. But Nora! Do you think that I could accept a sacrifice like that from you? Of course I couldn't, but who would have taken my will against yours? Oh, but Nora, I'd happily work day and night for you. I'd endure poverty and sorrow. But no man will sacrifice his honour for the one he loves. Thousands of women have! Oh, you're talking like a small child! Perhaps, but you don't think or talk like the man that I can bind myself to. What are you saying? There's only one explanation. You don't love me anymore, do you? Well, that's just it. And it pains me to say 
you told already, it does, but I don't love you anymore. I can't spend the night in a strange man's home. Oh, but can't we be anything more than strangers? You're perfectly well, but we couldn't. Can't we live here as brother and sister? You know that that wouldn't work. Goodbye to all of You won't see my children. But Nora! Nora! Listen, I've heard that when a wife leaves her husband, as I am doing now, you are not to feel obligated anymore. You are to feel completely free. And so am I. Even my ring. Even that? Even that. Here it is. There. Now it's all over. The servants know better about running the house than I ever did. 